Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Something I've seen a ton of people ask in the comments recently is, Zach, what are the best assault rifles now in Warzone? Because obviously, a little while back, we saw some decent nerfs to the C58, to the EM2, and also to the Krig, which were three of the most popular rifles in the game, especially when it comes to the Krig, which was one of the go-tos for almost every player. It was one of the most popular weapons in Warzone history. So, a lot of players are wondering what to use now. Today, we are breaking down what I believe are the top five best rifles in Warzone right now. If you enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. It would be seriously appreciated. Let's go for 3,500 likes on this one. And of course, if you're new to the channel or if you have not already subscribed, feel free to do so. Click that sub button, click that bell icon. That way you'll always be able to stay up to date with everything going on in COD. So starting at number five, surprisingly, I think the AMAX fills this void now. Uh, as we sort of talked about before with the whole long range meta, the Krig's nerf was pretty severe, severe enough at least to knock it out of the main meta talk when it comes to rifles in general. And the TTK with that thing over range now is just not it most of the time. Whereas the AMAX has now sort of risen back up indirectly because of that Krig nerf, primarily if you're consistently landing headshots and chest shots. Headshots are a big factor on the AMAX. If you can land one or two of those in a fight, the TTK is going to be phenomenal, but in general, I mean, we're all familiar with the AMAX. We've used this for the better part of the lifespan of Warzone, right? It's been around for a long, long time and was the best rifle for a long, long time. So everyone's used to how this weapon works now. Everyone's very familiar with it. And in turn, even though it has some recoil, it's really not all that difficult to use. We're building the same old, same old setup, at least in my opinion. Uh, we're going for the basic monolithic suppressor. Of course, we're also going for the Zodiac barrel, going to give us some better range and control on there. You could very well go for the Commando foregrip, but really ever since the AMAX was nerfed a little while back, I've really been enjoying the TAC laser on this thing. It makes it a bit more snappy. The recoil control difference versus Commando foregrip and no Commando foregrip, I don't think is really all that much. I don't notice it too much, so I go ahead and just run the uh, the, the TAC laser there and it works really well. Of course, we're using the VLK 3x optic. We're going to go ahead and throw the T-Pose reticle on that. Then finally, we got to go for the 45 round mags as well to close things out. Like I said, the basic AMAX setup that I think actually is one of the top five options at the moment. Now, number four is going to be the QBZ, but just for what it's worth, I'm not a fan of the QBZ, but I can't deny that it has really, really good stats on paper and players really like to use this gun. It doesn't really have much recoil at all. It's pretty much straight vertical, so very, very easy to use. It just feels awkward and a little bit weird in my opinion in game, so I'm not a huge fan of it, but uh, you can't deny how good this thing is in game uh, when it comes to its stats versus these other rifles. You can't have some of these other rifles on the list without mentioning the QBZ because it does match up very, very well. And with the Krig nerf, just like with the AK, this thing was indirectly bumped up quite a bit because the Krig and the QBZ were very similar to one another. But now because the Krig is not what it once was, the QBZ is definitely better than the Krig. And in my opinion, for most players, it'll be a better choice than the AMAX just because it's simply easier to use. Of course, we're going for a pretty basic setup here as well. We're once again going for the agency suppressor. In this case, we're going to go for the task force barrel, get that better range, better velocity, better control on there as well. Uh, I'm going to go for the field agent grip, honestly, just to smooth out that recoil even more over range. It's going to make it a bit more consistent and easier to land shots. Uh, currently, to my knowledge, the 60 round fast mag is still bugged. It actually is not slowing down your ADS time and its reload is obviously very fast. So there's really no reason not to be using that. Then lastly, we're going to go ahead. We're going to rock the three times optic. I'm going to throw on a reticle there. Most people will go for the precision just for a base reticle. But if you got the uh, the Coral Reef Milano bundle, I think you got the deep sea reticle. And I love this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and use that on there. But like I said, pretty basic setup. But right now, the QBZ is actually a very solid option. Then following that at number three, I'm going to go with the C58. Yes, it got nerfed. Is it the worst gun in the world now? No, not by a long shot. Statistically, it is able to match up quite well to some other rifles as we talked about in the whole long range meta video. It's not going to be the number one every single time, but landing a headshot in there is going to make this thing's TTK drop down quite a bit. If you're able to consistently land chest shots and headshots, just like with the AMAX, this weapon will pay off. And personally, I'm just very comfortable with the C58 now. I've been using this a lot over the past few months, so I'm very familiar with it. And statistically, while it's not the best anymore, it's also not the worst. And I'd be taking this over the vast majority of other rifles. So I feel like it has to have a spot here in the top five. Same setup as always, though. We're going to go for agency, better control, better range, and all that jazz. We're going to go for task force as well for pretty much the same reasons. We're, of course, rocking the field agent grip to help minimize that recoil, some which was actually nerfed. Once again, we're going for the three times optic and the scroll 
scroll over and throw on the deep sea reticle as well there we go for that then for the last attachment pretty simple here we're going for the 45 round drum i wouldn't really recommend the 55 rounds the fire rate's not uh fast enough to require all that ammo and 45 just feels a lot more snappy so i really like this setup it's been my go-to for quite some time and even with the nerfs my setup didn't really change now number two right now is maybe going to be a surprise to a few of you i've got the Farah. This thing has a very competitive TTK still. It's been adjusted a few times and, uh, you know, got more recoil and had its damage slightly reduced. But on paper, this thing is still very good. And even though it's gotten recoil nerfs and has uh, more recoil added to it than before, I still find it incredibly easy to use. Like, I don't have an issue using this thing over range. I feel like it's super easy to learn that pattern, master it, and just get it down for all types of engagements. And because of that, the ease of use and it's relatively good TTK, it's got to be a top rifle now, especially after the Krig was nerfed. So once again, we're going for the Groove Suppressor. Same old, same old there. Uh, in this case, we're going for the RPK barrel, but it's the same thing as Task Force. Uh, as far as the under barrel goes here, most of the time I'd recommend Spetsnaz just because that's the basic field agent grip, right? But in this case, the Spetsnaz speed grip helps with your horizontal recoil. And really, the Pharah's issue with its recoil right now is the fact that it does bounce side to side and has some horizontal movement. Obviously, it's moving vertical as well, but that's very easy to counter. You're just pulling straight back. It's harder to counter horizontal recoil, so having that as a pro is actually super beneficial here. And it also helps out with your mobility some too. So the speed grip, I think, is actually the better option on the Pharah in specific. Uh, here I go for the basic 60 round mags. It doesn't really affect it too much in terms of mobility and 45. I don't feel like it's enough with this fire rate. Then of course, lastly, we all saw this one coming three times optic and then go over. We're going to throw on the deep sea once again and call it a day. Pretty much a copy and paste setup on everything so far. And then coming in at number one, we've got the EM2. Over range, this thing has an incredibly, incredibly good TTK. Like there's just no denying that. And it's also very good as sniper support as well. This build is more so geared towards ranged fights. Obviously, it's the copy and paste of everything else we just went over. Agency, Task Force, Field Agent, 40 round, and three times optic. But like I said, for sniper support, this thing is also very viable. It's going to be a bit slower than using something like an MP7 or maybe like an OTS or another SMG for sniper support. But uh, it's definitely viable in that category. And if you wanted to use it for sniper support, go for the basic suppressor. I'd probably drop down to the Ranger barrel so you don't have as many mobility decreases like you would on the Task Force. I'd still probably leave the field agent grip in the 40 round mag. You could even go 50 if you wanted to, but I think 40 is totally sufficient. And instead of the three times, I'll go for the micro flex just because that's a bit better for close and medium range fights. And what do you know? You got a fantastic sniper support setup. Like clockwork, I am recording and the garbage man has arrived. So yeah, in my opinion, those are the top five rifles to use here in Warzone right now in the current meta with the current TTK. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, or if you enjoyed it, let me know by dropping a like on it. it would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't already subscribed, feel free to do so. Click that sub button, click that bell icon. That way you'll always know whenever I post a new video and you can always stay up to date with everything going on in COD. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I will catch you guys later. Peace out.